Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tax Talk, broadcast by the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. My name is Jordan Bateman, and I am the British Columbia Director of the CTF, a nonprofit, nonpartisan advocacy organization dedicated to just three things lower taxes, less waste, and more government accountability. That's what frames all of the communications, research, and advocacy work we do. Thank you for joining us. This is our second edition of our uh, new video podcast. Um, we hope that you enjoyed the first one. We do appreciate you joining us here on Roadkill Radio, youtube.com slash taxpayer.com or taxpayer.com slash blog, wherever you're joining us. Uh, and remember, there's an audio feed available through iTunes. Just search for Tax Talk. We hope that today's episode will educate and entertain you, inspire and even infuriate you from time to time, but most importantly, give you a bigger picture of the challenges facing our country today. But first, today's comment of the cast. Every episode, we highlight a comment left on either our website or through social media. And today's comes from Bev Heathcote of Ontario, who is not impressed with her provincial government's decision to kick in $500,000 in taxpayer money to support, of all things, the NBA All-Star Game in Toronto in 2016. Bev commented on our Facebook post that, quote, I do not watch the Leafs or the Raptors, and I have no intention of visiting the Air Canada Centre, so why are my pockets getting picked to fund it? First of all, as a Vancouver Canuck fan, I can say you're wise not to watch the Toronto Maple Leafs. But this is a great point, Bev. Why are you being asked to contribute to corporate welfare for millionaires? 385 NBA players make more than $1 million a year, and 59 of them make more than $10 million annually. No one but billionaires own NBA teams, Yet the hardworking folks of Ontario scraping to get by are paying for the privilege of having these fat cat athletes in town for three days. It's silly and it's wrong. Thanks for writing in, Bev. We want to hear from you. You can check out our website at taxpayer.com or email me at bc.director at taxpayer.com. You can follow the CTF on Twitter at taxpayer.com or myself at Jordan Bateman and engage on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash taxpayer.com. You can also leave a comment on this video on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash taxpayer.com. Drop us a note and you could be our comment of the cast next time. Well, there's a lot going on in Ontario these days as the Kathleen Wynne government clings to power by making the weirdest possible decisions. Whether it's cutting a half million dollar check to NBA billionaires or the Auditor General revealing that the election time decision to move two gas plants cost more than a billion dollars, there's always a lot happening in Ontario. Joining me now uh, to talk about Ontario is Candace Malcolm, the CTF's Ontario Director. Candace, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jordan. What on earth has happened to common sense in Ontario? Loaded question. Um, I mean, there's just so much content here. It's, it's tough to know uh, where to start, but uh, you know, you mentioned the NBA All-Star Game, the corporate welfare there. I think the government is just sort of desperate to, to have its name associated with some kind of a good news story. So, you know, they quietly uh, handed over half a, half a million dollars to Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, which is one of the most profitable companies in sports. I mean, the, the, the company's valued at over $2 billion. It owns the Maple Leafs, a, a, million, a billion dollar hockey team, uh, along with, with a bunch of other um, sports things in, in um, Toronto. Uh, then, yeah, the government uh, handed over this for the 2016 NBA All-Star Game, uh, theoretically, uh, so that they could have their government logo on, on the material and, who knows, maybe get some tickets in, in exchange. Um, but, but the weird thing was, Jordan, they, they didn't even announce it. They, they didn't uh, issue a news release. They, they didn't do anything. Um, uh, CTF dug, dug it up, and uh, the government confirmed it. It was a, it's a grant that's going to go to this uh, corporation in 2016. So it was it was a little weird, uh, just the process behind it. That the government, it, you know, they're, they're giving us money. Uh, they defended it the next day. Wynn said it was, you know, part of what the government does is promote tourism. So uh, it, it was an, an odd story, and, and it really uh, the story really went viral. You know it. Uh, started out here in Ontario and it ended up making news all over the world. So I, I think it was really a questionable uh, questionable decision by the government to want to give uh, money to, to such a high profile, such a successful uh, corporation in this province. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about, uh, like you said, an organization, billions of dollars. Uh, you're talking about a league that has 
you know, literally hundreds of millionaires playing in it. I mean, this isn't a, a mom and pop operation that uh, needed help. I mean, this is corporate welfare in, in just one of the most odious manners possible. It's precisely what, you know, uh, a friend of ours, Mark Milky, writes about, um, you know, giving money to these corporations. Um, it doesn't make sense. And there really is no moral justification for it, is there? I, I really don't. I, I don't see it, you know. And uh, it, just because they're successful, I mean, I, I think you could make the argument that uh, th this kind of spending is, is unnecessary, especially given the, the record uh, debt, in on, debt in Ontario, the high deficits. You know, why is the government handing over money to, to a company that's going to make money regardless? You know, uh, Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment rakes in the dough. Uh, they, they charge so much money for tickets, so much money for you know, once you enter the stadium for buying food and beer and all these other things, they're going to make a profit. Uh, why does the government need to be padding the bottom line, you know, just to congratulate themselves and then be involved in something like this? It was really a, a bad uh, bad story for the government, and I don't, I don't think it played well at all. I think whatever uh, their motive was in the first place to be involved, uh, certainly they're reconsidering it at this point. Yeah, frankly, the Maple Leafs have been so bad for so long, they should be writing a check to Ontario taxpayers to apologize. But, you know, we see this corporate welfare a lot. I mean, here in British Columbia, we saw Premier Christy Clark during the last election campaign uh, pony up $11 million in taxpayer money to bring the Times of India Film Awards to BC. Uh, we see it with the Juno Awards in city after city. The Juno Awards don't go to any Canadian city for, for free. There's always a check attached to it from taxpayers. We see it with the Grey Cup. What is it about these events that we don't believe as Canadians they can just stand on their own merit? Why do we feel like we have to fund them? I, I guess the government wants something to celebrate. And, you know, in, in, in Toronto, we're bringing the Pan Am Games uh, in 2015. It's just been one scandal after another uh, from these high high priced executives. We learned that their expenses, they were expensing uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in international travel, everything from 91 cent parking tickets to $15,000 hotel rooms in Mexico. Um, you know, it, the, the government justifies it by saying it's an investment uh, that's going to earn dividends, and, and you know may, maybe it does produce economic activity. But why is it taxpayers that have to take that risk? You know, if, if a company wants to bring an event to a city, or you know, if if, if a sports league wants to host an event, it, it's really they're they're the ones that are going to make a profit at the end of the day. So it should be their risk, and there's really no good reason why taxpayer money should be mixed into the fold. It's corporate welfare. And, you know, it, it outrages people of all spectrum across all levels of government, people, all, all uh, levels of society. Uh, people would rather see their tax dollars going to health care and education uh, than to, to, you know, corporate executives traveling the world on, on our dime. Yeah, well, one more question about this. You know, businesses today talk a lot about uh, corporate social responsibility. You know, many uh, large businesses have reports on corporate social responsibility. They usually do it and couch it in terms of environmentalism and, and, and that sort of thing. But do you think there's a place in these reports for corporations to stand up and say, you know, one of the ways we're responsible socially is we don't take or seek out this kind of corporate welfare. Would you like to see a movement like that? Yeah, I think that would be a great benchmark. And just going back to Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, you know, when they built the Air Canada Centre, the, uh, the arena where the Maple Leafs now play, they didn't take any money in any any corporate money. You know, uh, teams all over the league turn to cities and, and, and ask for money in order to, to build these arenas. And Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment was a, a really a standard for a responsible, in my opinion, responsible corporate citizen. They, they also contributed by building um, headways and helping extend their building to the public transit in, in the city of Toronto. So instead of having the city pay for those, the, the corporation did. And I think that's excellent. I, w I would love to see more companies c kind of standing up and, and presenting this information so people know that they're not one of the ones going in and asking for this corporate welfare. Uh, I, I think it's a, it, it would be a great uh, addition to that whole corporate uh, responsibility movement. Yeah, I agree completely. Now, shifting gears, earlier this month, you put out a news release regarding the Liberals' election time decision to move two unpopular gas plants. At the time, they claimed the cost would be about $40 million, but now the Auditor General has revealed it to be a $1.1 billion cost. What do you make of this whole sordid issue? I mean, it's unbelievable. Just the uh, traction of this issue here in Ontario is 
I think it's real. I mean, the, the, the issue's been around, but it, the, the government can't escape it. Uh, the latest, so, so just for a background, uh, there were two uh, gas fuel power plants canceled in the wake of the 2011 provincial election here in Ontario. Uh, you know, they were politically motivated, and uh, the, the government misled uh, Ontario taxpayers about the true costs. So uh, last spring in uh, April, there was an Auditor General report telling us the real cost of the Mississauga plant cancellation, uh, which was uh, $275 million, opposed to the 190 the government was claiming. Uh, that was pretty bad. But then in October, earlier this month, uh, the Oakville, the second plant, uh, the Auditor General report came out, and it was much, much, much worse. So. Uh, the government, as you said, <laughs> said that the cost was going to be $40 uh, million. I actually have a quote I want to read. So from a news release uh, dated in September 2012, Ontario's energy minister, who was Chris Bentley at the time, said this, quote, Over the coming days and weeks, you'll read and hear a lot of numbers related to the cost of the plant relocation. The only accurate cost to taxpayers for this relocation is $40 million, end quote. So, so we actually learned last uh, earlier this month that the actual cost is 100 or 1.12 billion dollars, uh, not 40. So they, they were a little bit off. Um, th th there might be some uh, future savings. The Auditor General report said that there, there might be savings of about 275 million for this relocation, but still, taxpayers are on the hook for the Oakville plant. 815 million dollars. Add that to the Mississauga ca cancel gas plant and you have $1.09 billion um, that taxpayers and electricity ratepayers will have to pay back, uh, estimated over 20 years. Uh, so by all accounts, you know, this was a political decision. It was made during an election. It was, it was made by uh, the war room, the McGinty Liberals. Premier Wynne, the current premier, was part of that war room. She was a campaign chair. It, it, it's really a, as bad of a scandal as you can get. I think public... Uh, outrage is, is very high. I can't tell you the amount of emails and phone calls and text messages and tweets that I'm getting from just outraged taxpayers wanting, you know, more accountability, more punishment, more, you know, it, it just doesn't seem enough when the, the premier sort of issues an apology, says we're sorry, won't do it again, and uh, tries to change the channel. This is, this is one of the worst political scandals I've, I've ever seen. Yeah, am I reading it right when when I uh, see that there was a revelation that the contract to build the plant was probably going to expire anyway with nothing being built, and they essentially threw away a bunch of this money for nothing? Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, that's right. That was one of the other uh, revelations that came out of this uh, recent Auditor General report. Uh, so th there was a lot of opposition to this uh, gas plant being built in Oakville. It, you know, it, it wasn't just the Liberals who wanted it cancelled. All parties wanted it cancelled. The, the local... Um, uh, city Council actually issued uh, a bylaw banning the the um, gas plant to be built. So nobody wanted this thing. It was it, questionable why it was decided to be built in this neighborhood in the first place. Um, so according to the Auditor General report, there were provisions in the contract uh, that, that that meant that it wasn't it wasn't a good contract. It was set, set to expire within two years, and there would have been no penalty and no cost to taxpayers. Um, but as I said, you know, it was going into an election and Premier at the time, Dalton McGinty, just wanted to make sure that this contract was complete, completely finished, that he could go and say with certainty that the plant wasn't going to be built. So he, he did everything he could to cancel the um, contract and, and that meant paying out uh, TransCanada Pipelines who, or, or TransCanada who were the, uh, the, the company that was hired to build this. Uh, and, and, and because of that, uh, that's why the costs are so high. So, uh, Candice, last question. I mean, you mentioned that you have never seen uh, this kind of reaction to uh, a political story before. What kind of confidence do you think taxpayers have in the Ontario government right now? And, you know, is the only way this really going to be resolved is uh, another election? I, I mean, I, 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 I'm not someone who likes elections. I'm not someone who often calls for an election. Uh, but this, this is something that you know, this is a major, major breach of trust for Ontario taxpayers. Uh, the, the, the numbers are astronomical, but really the principle, uh, you know, and, and, you know, we have a new premier now, but she was a cabinet minister in, in McGuinty's government. It's, it's the same group of people um, that, that, are, that are running this government. So uh, the, the opposition progressive conservatives have issued a motion uh, to call an election over this issue. 
and, and the governing uh, liberals have rejected it. So we're not going to see an election anytime, not not within the next few months anyway. But I, I think that this is really something that uh, people in Ontario are, are just completely floored. And uh, I, I think there needs to be some greater level of accountability aside from just, uh, you know, issuing an apology and moving on. So, you know, maybe the ultimate uh, uh, punishment will come on election day, but, you know, we're just going to have to wait because there's no, uh, there's no uh, election on the horizon at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, to follow Candace on Twitter, follow her at, at Candace Malcolm. Candace, keep up the great work in Ontario. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jordan. Take care. Now it's time for Waste of the Week, an example of how government is wasting your hard-earned tax dollars. This week we go to Brandon, Manitoba, where the mayor, Sherry Dector Hurst, was so excited to get in on a photo op of the first WestJet flight coming into Brandon Airport that she dragged three city staffers on a drive to Winnipeg so they could all fly to Calgary, stay overnight, and then be on the first flight to Brandon. All so she could wave to the crowd and take credit for this private enterprise's decision. That, folks, is a textbook example of a taxpayer-funded photo op and our Waste of the Week. Well, that's it for this episode of Tax Talk from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. You can check out our website at taxpayer.com or email me at bc.director at taxpayer.com. You can follow us on Twitter at taxpayer.com or myself at Jordan Bateman. You can also Join our Facebook page at facebook.com slash taxpayer.com or our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash taxpayer.com. Thank you for tuning in. And until next week, I'm Jordan Bateman asking you to remember this quote from the immortal Stephen Colbert. Quote, I stand by this man because he stands for things. Not only for things, he stands on things. Things like aircraft carriers and rubble and recently flooded city squares. And that sends a strong message that no matter what happens to America, she will always rebound with the most powerfully staged photo ops in the world. Take care, everyone.